my lifestyle. It's my lifestyle. <laughs> it's a freaking grounds crew. <laughs> Damn right. Damn right. Uh, so I got to be the loud one, I guess, this week because Bill is not here. Bill's in Vegas, gambling away, playing men's softball. Oh, not worried. That's, what Bill's that, that's where Bell is at. So we brought brought in somebody better. Uh, <laughs> we brought in John and Coney. How are you? I'm doing well. How you doing? Welcome back to the show. This is your Thank second you. time, third time, third. third, third? Time. Yep. Sweet. Um, I know you've been ripping on Twitter the last week or so with the with the playoffs and World Series going on. Uh, what what are some big takeaways you've had so far before we get into the World Series? Um. I mean, playoffs as a whole, the, in my opinion, the umpiring has been kind of a mess. Mm-hmm. Um, World Series seems to be a bit better with it, but there were, I mean, all those playoff games, the umpires given four or five inches off the plate. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know how there were high-scoring games in those. Um, replay system has been awful throughout the playoffs. How is it they still get stuff wrong with that? I don't know. I don't know. Half the time I feel like they're protecting themselves because if they overturn these calls that are so blatantly – incorrect i feel like it, it would just literally just shine a light on how bad they actually are doing yep so it seems blatant it's like some calls seem really because it's easy blatant, to make yeah. the call and then it's like all right we have to have definitive evidence for the overturn right. and then sometimes there even is definitive evidence and yeah. there's still no overturn. and even the people like the guy they have in the crew they'll have a, you know somebody back in new york being like yeah this is what it should be almost like football has mm-hmm. and then they stay with the call and it's crazy yeah i don't i don't understand that process at all, because like some like the rest of the world is like seeing yeah. the TV version. People of that it. never watch it mm-hmm. ever. People that don't watch sport, whatever, they could see. They're like, oh yeah, he looks like he was he beat the ball or the ball beat him or yep. whatever. And it's I, I don't know how they're and getting like it we wrong. don't even. There are some like views and stuff that we don't even get to see that the replay people right. have. So it's like you guys could totally see the, yeah. where the answer lies here. A lot of it's live time though. Like a lot, I'm watching the game in live time, and I'm like, oh, safe. They call him out, and I'm like, no. He was he like, was safe like he, he's not and then they go back to the evidence and they show it and they stick with their calls which is crazy for a playoff too like this is when if you're gonna make change and be mm-hmm. right be right in the playoffs yep you know mess up in April mm-hmm. and and I feel like you know talking about like the umpire calls and things I also feel like the selection of umpires like I don't know how what the actual process is there but I know that there's umpires who like for their strike zone are like 99 out of 100 correct calls yeah. and stuff like that, and they're not in the playoffs. And right. It's like, and then you had, uh, who was it? Was it CB? He's in the playoffs. Or he was in the playoffs, right? C. E. Buckner? Yeah. Yes, I think he was at and some he, point. He Laz was, Diaz? He, oh, La- sorry, it was yeah, Laz yeah. I'm thinking of giving, that's what I was, five, six inches off the plate. Crazy, How? crazy. And then he was, pitchers were throwing like Bob Ross like paint jobs on the corners, mm-hmm. and he was calling the balls. Yep. Next thing, up and away, clearly out of the zone, mm-hmm. strikes. So I... Again, that goes back. Yeah, I, I don't understand what they were doing with their zone, their everything. It was just a mess. Yeah, no, I definitely would love to see that cleaned up. Um, were there any before the World Series? Were there mm-hmm. anybody, any players? Obviously, Eddie Rosario kind of came out and just did all the work and great yeah, work for yeah. the Braves. Anybody else that you were like, wow, I loved what they were doing? I mean, uh, Kike Hernandez. Yep. I, did he get out at all? I mean, what did he? Very rarely. <laughs> yeah, that was unbelievable for and everybody. Of course, after that's like we need to sign. Everybody needs to sign him. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's like a 250 hitter. No, exactly. I, I like him a lot. I think he's a great like Absolutely. guy to have on a team. Yes, but he's not what he did. No, no, no he, he's, but he went off. Yes, he's he's like the postseason guy. Same yeah. thing, and I always talk about him on our show, Chris Taylor. Yep. Like, I think it was the day after we had the podcast of, of like. I'm like, yo, Chris Taylor, he bats 250 in the regular season, but in the postseason, he is a god. Yeah. And then he went and hit, like, three home runs in a game or something yeah, like that. Yeah, but, Ke- I mean, Kike has to be, outside of, like, Murphy in 15, like, mm-hmm. one of the better playoff runs I saw. Oh, absolutely. hitter. I was just dominating. That was nuts. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, home runs for him? He's a tiny dude. Yep. Made no sense, but he's he just, like, he gets in that mode. Yeah. And just, like, all I, over I would the have to say him more than, I mean – Anybody else that I saw throughout these playoffs made an impact, even though they didn't make it to the World Series, yep. he did everything he possible for that team. He put them on his back yeah. for sure. Um, yeah, no, that was amazing to watch. And, and, and yeah, it, it just goes with the series that they had there. I mean, it's kind of been the same thing in the World Series where any, it seems like the Astros' whole playoff run has been almost like a feast or famine kind of thing. They're either kicking the crap out of somebody or getting the crap kicked out of them. Yes, and I think that has to go back to their pitching a little bit because yeah. it's kind of been a little shaky. Obviously, they lost McCullers, which mm-hmm. is a huge, huge blow. But now, you know, 
getting into game one of the World Series, the Braves lose Morton. Right. So now it's like almost an even playing yeah, game in reality. Yeah, and that's how I was talking to my brother about it last night. Like, how nuts is it that the Astros are this good with, like, one and a half pitchers that anybody can name? Yeah. Like, they don't have a, real. a staff that's full of people that – anybody know they just mm-hmm. put it together they just have guys who are like well they could hit <laughs> throw you know, they sure can um deeds can you do me a favor while i'm thinking about it can you pull up um brantley's uh, postseason numbers I love brantley love brantley he is so much that fun dude, to i was telling my brother too, like that guy just hits all hits day long and his day. swing is just perfect yep. all the time great approach and yeah. like i i forget the stat came just, up yeah. during the game of like what he's doing in the postseason i'm sure deeds will have in a second like he just mashes constantly, yeah. and it's. He, but even in regular, the guy shows great, up and hits three hundred every year. Yep. He's yep. he's that, he's like what the Giants had, just like a professional hitter. Yes, that, that he, exactly. Yeah, and, we and talked about that last. So sad Thursday. the Giants yeah. didn't make it. Just, that was that was a great run by those. Great guys. run, and the way it ended was just terrible. Yep. But another horrible umpiring call. Happened to flow too. Uh, yeah, Poor so guy. sad. <laughs> so, so sad. Guys, guys, just going through the ringer. Um, but yeah, the Giants as like a hitting team, we were kind of we were talking about it a ton just because it was so like mind blowing. Like, hey, none of these guys are like, you know, top ten in the league anymore. No, they, they used to be, but they're all professional yep. hitters, top to bottom. It's, they're play the tough game at right. bats. So you're not going to go up there and fool them. Mm-hmm. They're going to like as a starter. That's I think I said it last time. That's one of the teams that like I wouldn't want to face in the playoffs. Like they're just going to wear you out. And if yep. you have to come back on short rest, like you're going to be done like they're mm-hmm. gonna wear you out again yep and then they got logan webb come out and just yep. dice yeah. up everybody and it's just... it seems like brantley would play well on that like should be on that team yes like yeah, a guy yeah. that just shows up and does his job and no spotlight no no he doesn't bring attention to himself he just mm-hmm. shows up does the right thing and hits yep do you got those so in 54 at bats he has 19 hits nine rbis is uh batting 352 his ops is only 778 though okay but still, three fifty two. Yes, I think I think I read somewhere too, like the top half of the Astros order is batting over three hundred in the postseason. Is that right? Is that I a real so. thing? Altuve is actually struggling, isn't he? Or was a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, he was, I think he was struggling until like last he, night. Yeah, I mean, pretty game. he's still. It's still. Yeah, you there, can't. But, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, because he could pop one out like last night. He could. He could do at any point. Just yep. get the bat on the ball. Yep. And, I think it's so wild too, and like I know it's gonna sound insane, like. He swings a 34-inch bat. Does he? Yeah. I didn't realize that. If you like actually like look at it next time he's in the box, like he swings <laughs> a like, giant bat. Yeah, I got to check it out. It's insane. It's crazy because a lot of like, I know A-Rod, even Bonds, I think they swung like 32 or 32 and but a half. Yeah, I know like, Bonds swung a small bat. They didn't bat, swing yes. very big uh, yeah. very big bats. He- I don't know how heavy they are. A lot of those guys love the heavy bat. Mm-hmm. Altuve is a 34-31 from what they were saying. So See, that's a, why a lot a, a lot of guys don't go drop three because yeah. the wood gets weak. Right. But right. I think, I think Josh Hamilton swung like a 34-34. Or yeah, I I played with some guys that I mean, not in the minors. Like once they got up to the big leagues, ended up switching over to like 33-34s or 33-35s. Like they went plus one. Like it was just like solid. Oh my god. But the ball comes in so hard, you hit right, a solid yeah, need, <laughs> that solid yep. of a piece, and yep. it's gone. Did that's, you have that? Uh, I'm trying to find it. Okay, no problem. Um, yeah, no, it's definitely. The way the Astros are constructed, I feel like it's with the the Braves as well. Although the Astros a little more so, like they just yeah. have the guys that can put the ball in play. And like mm-hmm. l- like last night, right? Where I'm just gonna like jump into game two for a second. Yeah. They had seven of nine guys in the lineup get hits, yeah. and then even the two who didn't, which were Bregman and Alvarez, I believe. Bregman had a sack fly early in the game for an RBI. Mm-hmm. Jordan had. Uh, just a walk but it ended up becoming a run like they're they're all producing in some way and i think yeah. that's that's the the overarching thing is do you produce right throughout the offseason in whatever way possible that's why they're i mean that's why they're where they are and that's why teams like even the yankee like the yankees mets they both had to have been top five in the league and you know double plays with guys in scoring position mm. seemed like it happened every time oh my god but when you got guys that even guys that are struggling produce for you you know, you don't have to hit 350 in the World Series if you drive in runs that you have to drive in. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, Bregman's another one of those guys. Every playoff he's been in, he's done the job. Mm-hmm. That's it. It's just getting getting the job done and, and understanding. I, th- I forget who was talking about it. I mean, it was either Poppy or A-Rod saying, like, you have to just take the humble approach. Mm-hmm. You're not there to hit home runs. You're there to just produce. Right. And then if that ends up becoming whatever, it doubles home runs, whatever, yep. fantastic. But if you're not – Moving the needle, it's you're not worth it for right. the for the, for the playoff. Team. Yeah, if you're if you're a gimme out in the playoffs, you're not going to play very long and yeah, on yeah. a playoff roster at nope. least. Nope, it's I, I oh God, I love the playoffs because it, it really is such a different kind of baseball. Yeah, it's I mean it's beautiful. You got it. 
Yeah, so they have three guys over 300. One's at uh, 298. So Kyle Tucker's 298. Uh, Gurriel's 340. Brantley's 352. <laughs> Alvarez is 410. Jeez. Um, Correa is at uh, 273. Bregman 239, and Altuve is 200. Wow, Altuve is uh, yeah. He he was like 190 something to start the game yesterday. Wow, yeah. Okay, okay. But I mean, that's the, like that, that top five right there. That's ridiculous. Right. That that's what that's what's carrying them. So um, definitely curious how game uh, game three is going to go because they're kind of starting to get into their, their back half of the pitching rotations. Yeah, I think it's going to be more of the same. It's going to be somebody's going to win and it's going to be a lot of runs. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be just – that seems to be the way that everything's been going in this playoff. They're not quick, you know, pitcher duel games. They're yes. getting <laughs> – Yes, it's, it's people who, are scoring who jumps runs. out early and then yeah. can you hold on to it with your bat, with your, uh, with your bullpen yep. Yep. and stuff like that. Um, uh, what do I want to talk about? Oh, um – Matzek. Yeah. That guy's a dog. That guy, yeah. That guy's a dog. Yeah. I love what he's been doing. I saw he was signing baseballs and writing Nutsack. Because that's yeah. really what... Was he? That's, that's amazing. That's his, that's his nickname. Yeah, really it should be. That, 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 yeah. Cause that he's was been, unbelievable what mm-hmm. he did the other day. He should never pay for anything again in Atlanta, ever. No, absolutely And not. he probably won't. Mm-hmm. That, that, that was... Yeah. Just a savage. And that, that's that's the kind of performances you need to see. Right. You, that's what you need in the, in the big moments. Right. And it doesn't... You know... I mean, he's he's been around for a while. I think he was out of baseball for but whatever. But mm-hmm. like, right. doesn't matter gonna... doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't have to be your clothes or whatever. That dude just stepped up and took the team. Yep, that was unreal. unbelievable, unbelievable. That's uh, funny. I need one of those balls. Right, I, I saw it <laughs> on Twitter. I was like, that here. is absolutely electric. We gotta get one from here. Like, it wasn't even, it wasn't for somebody he like knew either. It was just like a fan. Just signing. And it. then they just like tweeted it and were like, "Yo, this That's is incredible. the coolest thing ever." Yeah. Um, oh, goodness. Game two. Game two. I mean, yeah. I think I had a feeling. So, for me, like, my pick for the World Series, just for argument's sake, was the Astros mm-hmm. in seven. And I think the fact that they came out the way they did in game two uh, proved to me anyway that, like, because I, I feel like a lot of people, once the Braves jumped out quick and won the first yeah. game, it was like, oh, the, Bra- the Braves got it. The Braves, the Braves. And I was like, no, I don't think you guys understand, like, the Astros exist. Right, yeah, they're They have they're the, the postseason team. experience. Yeah. They are a great team regardless of – and I, I'm, I'm still tired of the, the that the fact that the cheating conversation is still a thing. Yeah. Guys, like – Most of the guys are gone. The guys that are, like – the guys that were there weren't even involved in it, I don't think. Yeah, it's just – I mean, obviously, Altuve's thing is still – They're up. never going to – I mean, until that – until everybody until leaves the, the whole Astros, team is gone. right? Yes, until yes, like yes. every piece of that team is gone, they're never going to hear. You know, even if Bregman stays forever, he's going to get hurt in ten years. Yep. It's going to be annoying to everybody too. Yeah, but I mean, at this point, it's just like listen, they're good. They're a good great baseball team. team. Great team. Like they're doing it again now. Like it's they're a great team. Yep, they 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 know how to win, and they just don't go away. No, it's like you you have to good be good for on, Dusty Baker. Good for Dusty Baker. Good for Dusty Baker. So I, I love that for him. He, do, he yeah. seems like a great guy, like yep. someone I would totally want to play for. Right. Yeah, like just I say I love all the older managers coming back now. Mm-hmm. Like I hope Gian I, I don't know if he interviewed with the Padres he, or, he, or he's going or to going something to yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Like I hope the Mets interview him too. I would l- Oh, please. That's a whole I didn't even put that on here, but the Mets manager search in itself is a whole other layer yeah, of their but problems. Yeah. I, I hope that he gets picked up somewhere cuz I think he'd be fun with like the younger kids today. I think it would be mm-hmm. if, especially in San Diego. Like, did you see what he said about your mean Mercedes earlier in the year? No, just straight well, probably up, did. But. Just straight up roasted him for like when uh, <laughs> when he like good. like retired for a game. Oh yeah, after he hit like nine thousand. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and like he because he was at like their minor league team for mm-hmm. like a week or whatever it was, and he just straight up roasted him. He was like, "Yo, you're not actually good. You did good for half a season. Like, yeah. shut up." That's and, like, awesome. Just, I, it, it's definitely like when when Larusa got mm-hmm. brought in for the White Sox. I think we all were kind of like. What is this? Because that team doesn't seem like it would gel with La Russa's Yeah, and I think it of... didn't in the beginning. Like I didn't. I think they were struggling in the beginning. Mm-hmm. You know, the players and him. yeah, they definitely had to figure each other out. But it, it seemed like I mean, obviously they made it yeah deep. Like it, it seemed like it worked out. I, yep. They kind of had to have a little more communication. It felt like. But... Yeah, it's, that's probably where like the age, like that big age gap with a lot of the yeah. Like it doesn't see, it, on paper doesn't make sense, or it doesn't seem like it would make sense for Tim Anderson and Tony La Russa to get along. Right, but. But Somehow I, I don't think like Ozzy would have that problem. I no, think Ozzy would yeah. come right in. And like he's would tough, love but him. he'd probably like like obviously, especially with like Latin players, yeah. he'll work and nicely. The, yeah, and and I, uh, I could see him doing really and well. The, and there. the Padres would make a lot of sense because they have yep. a lot of fire. They're obviously a lot of young guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, the Mets, I think they. 
The Mets one. We'll get to we'll get to all the Mets. Well, yeah, yeah. Later. Well, it's a, that's a more deeper conversation. <laughs> um, who, who were your pick before the World Series started? What was your pick for who winning, how many games type thing? Um, I who would win? I, I think the Astros are going to win. Like I always thought that I want the Braves to win mm-hmm. just for Fred. Like, Freddie Freeman kills us. You know, I'm a Met fan. Kills yeah. the Mets. But I still love Freddie as but, a person. I, and I. I he needs a World Series, and mm-hmm. he's just too good to go and stay with that team for his whole career and not get one. So yeah. I, I, I hope that they get it. I, you know, I want them to win, but I think the Astros will mm-hmm. end up taking it. Yeah, I think I, I didn't really have any. Uh, like I said, I picked the Astros, but I didn't really have yeah. like uh, one would feel better for me. Right? Like, no, I, I just like, want I don't even Freddie hate the Braves that much. Like, no, I really I, don't. For me, it's more the Phillies that I like right. dislike. And I'd rather. I, I think it would be funnier that everybody's like, "Oh, the NLE sucks. The NLE sucks." Which, and then the NLE yeah, has but a, take the championship. That's all that matters. Yep. Yep. And I think too is and like all three of the MVPs are coming out of the NLE or. or Three of the top guys yeah. from the National League are yep. coming out of the NL East. But no, it's okay. We're the worst. We're the worst division ever, yeah, right? Worst. No. But like, I feel like we talked about at least halfway through the season. Obviously, the Mets were still in first place at the time, <laughs> and that didn't go well. But nope. early in the season, we were like, no, like the Braves and the Mets are supposed to be comparable, and I think they were for a time. And then obviously, the Braves did yeah. all the right things, and the Mets yeah. fell off. And yep. that is what it is. But the I trade think deadline, the Braves got better. Yes, they did. That's, that, that's... That, I mean, listen, all of those moves have paid off. Solaire. Yep. Uh, Duval, I think that's Rosario. where that split came in. Yep, the absolutely. Braves got better, and the Mets didn't get better. Yep, absolutely. They brought in good bats, yep. and like, listen, those those guys on paper in the middle of the season were just good hitters, but not like you wouldn't look at them and be like those, those guys are going to carry you to a yeah, World Series. Yep. But they are. Mm-hmm. They've they've hit incredible. I think Soler at the end of the season had like 14 home runs in a month or something yeah. like that, like mashing. So that, I mean, that's what you love to see there from your moves at the trade deadline. Mm-hmm. Bottom line, um, absolutely. I mean, it's it's similar to 15. You get guy. I mean, Cespedes. Everybody was hoping carried them then, mm-hmm. um, but you know, Murphy carried them through the playoffs. So yeah, he, Murphy before that wasn't a, he was once again a good hitter, but mm-hmm. like nobody saw him going off like that. So I think that's kind of what the Braves did. They kind of 2015 themselves, and they got in and they got hot, mm-hmm. super hot, right at the right time. Yep. Oh God, Daniel Murphy in 2015. Yeah. That was and and they beat teams that they should like. You know, the, the Mets shouldn't have probably beat the Cubs or the Dodgers, but mm-hmm. they did. The Braves, same thing. They handled the Cubs. Right, and, and the, yeah. But the Braves probably shouldn't have made it through what they made it through. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, listen, know, very the, similar between the two teams. I think it was Jock that was saying, it was like, hey, like, everybody's kind of doubting us a little bit, but we just beat the Dodgers, so right. maybe we are those guys. Yeah, like, maybe we're pretty good right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you get in the playoff run of the World Series, all it takes is a good – Couple weeks. You just have to get hot. That's yeah, it. That's hot. it. Just get there. That's that's really what everyone's talking about. Jock and his like, pearls are going to carry him through. Jock and his pearls. What a gangster. <laughs> what an absolute gangster. Yep. Um, game three's tomorrow. What do you yeah. think about that pitching matchup? I feel like Luis Garcia is like sneaky underrated. He is. Uh, I mean, Anderson's good, too. Mm-hmm. I, I think that Houston has to win tomorrow if yes. they want to win. I, th- I think tomorrow is their most important game. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't see them... I really, I really can't see them winning it if they don't win tomorrow. But I could, I could honestly, you could easily argue that the game tomorrow could be the most important game because, yeah. like, the Braves are going home. Like, right. if, they have, three they, if the Astros stack two in a row, then it's like, all right, where's the momentum shift? But right. if the Braves win their first game at home, is there a momentum shift back in their favor? Then it only takes two more. It only yep. takes a split at home and a split on the road, and yep. they win. Yeah. So definitely, definitely going to be interesting to watch. Yeah. Um, I mean. Is that a great pitching matchup for a World Series that you know mm-hmm. you're used to? No, but but I think it could provide some some more theatrics because it might not right. go well, and it's like all right, cool. Who is yeah. it going to be like a shootout? Or are they going right. to? Right, it, it could be, be somebody game? drops a five spot in the first or four spot in the first, mm-hmm. and the other team does Which it in seems the second. To be the, the trend right, right now, yeah. <laughs> and you know you might see a team catch up, and hopefully it's a good game. I mean, these blowouts are fine if you're one of the fans of the other, but like there hasn't been a lot of close like good playoff games. Yep. So I, th- I think well, we need to mix one of those series, in, at least in this series. Yeah, yeah we Dodgers, need to start Giants mixing them in. Never stopped. Oh no, that was an awesome. That series. That was so much fun. As it should have been with yeah. those two teams. Absolutely, I would have liked to see that as as the championship series. Yeah. And obviously, like, that's a whole different and the conversation with the rankings and things like that. But yep. that was just an unbelievable series. So much fun. Yep. Agreed. Let me let, let me do this real quick before we get into the Mets. I'm pushing the Mets to the end. No, yeah. Push we the we Mets always to the go end. off on Met tangents. So yes, we, we do. <laughs> That's that is the problem with this podcast. Uh, Otani. We always have our Otani watch on this show. Have to. And he received the Commissioner's Historic Achievement Award this week. So just 
you know, the league recognizing this is the greatest season ever. Right. Here you go. You have to win MVP. You have right? to win MVP. I, the, you like, we talked about all the time. There should not be a conversation. There's a reason that Vlad Guerrero Jr. didn't win that award. Right. Because like, he didn't have the most historic have, season. It, like, or an historic season. Do you think he can do that again next year? Or even some Show semblance it? of it? Yeah. Yeah, he's so good. Yeah. I, I really do. I, I don't think he'll have a problem maintaining it. Because it's not like he has to pick or choose. I don't think he – not that he doesn't work hard at hitting, but, like, I don't know if he really hits in between that off. Like, I, I feel like he just well, kind of show he doesn't, and goes. Yeah, he said he doesn't do Yeah, he just PT. show and go and he hits. Mm-hmm. So it's not like, oh, I'm going to focus on pitching but neglect my hitting. He already neglects it. <laughs> right. And he's incredible. Yeah, and, and he's not pitching – like, I don't know how many innings. I think he had, like, 150. I mean, like, 130. Will he win Cy Young's? Probably not. But no. if you're a top-tier starter, like, yep. a, a solid number two, and you could drop 30, 40 home runs a year. Yep. That's it. That's it. And and I think from, from like what he was – That's, like, the little league dream. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and it's opened the door for, you know, other guys to try and do this and whatever. Yeah. I think that's great. Um, but, yeah, it's definitely – I think he was saying that he doesn't do BP. And, like, we saw this at the right. Home Run Derby. Like, he has a tough time hitting BP because he's only worked on – like, like live, game. live reps kind yeah. of thing. Like hops in on a machine at 90 and just starts hitting BP right. that way. That's why I think he'll maintain because it's not once it, even if he's working on pitching stuff, he's not neglecting anything that he's already not neglecting. Right. So I I, I can't see a reason why he wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Unless, and I think you know, it, the uh, the Angels starting to figure out like how to manage him <laughs> pitching wise. Mm-hmm. Obviously, like this year was really kind of like a full full season for yeah. him, and and he had a few ups and downs, but like like injury wise, but nothing like too crazy. And no. then they kind of figured out how to manage him a little more. And I mean, I, yeah. I would like to see them figure out how to get him into the playoffs. Like we talked about getting him, yeah, him Trout in the playoffs. Like I know, I don't. Well, the Angels that'd ever be really, really get him the, the test if they can keep him healthy all the way into a playoff run, right? And yeah, and let him through the playoff run. Mm-hmm. But their test is going to get to be getting to the playoffs. Yes, yeah. Unfortunately, that is even with the Trout and with anybody else. They brought in some great players over the years too when Trout was there. Like they brought in some talent. They yep. just haven't it's just doing, doing haven't nothing. And it. I think it's still they're they're not bringing in pitching. Yeah, their pitching staff got to be right. one of the worst in the league right now. Yeah, just, other than they him. keep bringing in great infielders. Yep, and you know great hitters, but this pitching, yeah, they they have to bring in pitching. But I yeah I, I agree with you. I think this season they allowed the Angels to figure out how to manage him. Yeah, and, and let him. And he's do still his best. figuring out how to right. go through a big league season too. Yep. Even you know playing, he played I'm sure plenty of games over. Um, overseas before he came over, but mm-hmm. like you know, MLB is a different, different schedule, yep. different travel, different everything. Mm-hmm. So you know, it, it's a problem. I'm sure, it took him some time to adjust to that as well as you know, as, as well as them trying to learn him. He's got to learn them. He's got to learn the coaches. He's got to learn yeah. his teammates. What yep. he can't. Yeah. Do you think this is something we've talked about a million times on, the, on our show? Do you think he moves on from the Angels at some point? I. I mean, because he's a free agent. Somebody's going to have to, and Trout is one same. I mean, Trout's there forever. Oh, he okay. Yeah, he's, he's, well, he's they're going to have to. They're going to have to dump one of them. Have to at right? some point. There's no. I, I I can't see them affording unless Steve Cohen decides to buy the Angels too. <laughs> right. But, but I, <laughs> Make I can't. The Angels are farm system. Right. Yeah. Basically, <laughs> right. just breed players and send them over yep. to New York. Um, but I I can't see them being able to afford both those guys. We we I have, mean really and bring in anybody else that's going to help them. Right. Get, if, if they want to get to the World Series, they can't keep both of them. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah. Unless they have just an exorbitant amount of money lying around, but I don't think they do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like they have a pretty high payroll right now, but it's not to the point where, like, they don't have the actual. They don't have Dodger money or Mets right. money. But like you're. Yankees, I mean, Shohei's going to cost a lot of. What would money. you pay him? Everything. Everything. A the blank house? check. Yeah. Yeah. How many I mean, years? How do you not? Um. I'm gonna get my I mean, you up realistically, wise. probably like I, I don't know if I would go ten with him. I'd probably okay, go in fair. like six to eight range. Mm-hmm. I'll, maybe options for the next two, give him option or whatever. Six with two player options or yeah. two team options two, or whatever. Yeah, something um, mutual option, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, once again, to see though if he keeps up with the hitting and that, you know, mm-hmm. one of them might go at some point. His arm might go at some point. So do I want to lock some guy up at? 35 40 mil a year that's it that's it i mean really okay we have we have met like 50 yeah that's i mean i because could see end, it but at the end of the day if you're if you're assuming in the let's call it six years if you're assuming that he does both mm-hmm. he, like, he's easily a 30 like if you split him into two people yeah he's a 30 million dollar hitter right 
He's also a $30 million pitcher at a 2-8 to 3 ERA. Yeah. Right? Like, that's basically what Stroman was this year, roughly, yep. and he's asking for 25, Right, call it. So, if you have, if you combine that into one person, maybe he gives you a discount at 45, sure. Yeah. But. You think 50. I mean. Like, like reasonably. I, it wouldn't surprise me. But I also. He's got to repeat the next two years what he yes, did this year. Yeah, though. Oh, oh, absolutely. He, he can't slack in anything if absolutely. he wants that money. I think he'll end. I mean, I don't. I think he'll be fine. I don't know if he'll beat, like, the home run number, everything that he did this mm-hmm. year. I mean, I'd say realistically he probably falls in, like, the 35 to 40 range. 40, maybe. Yeah, I, Unless, once again, in the next two years, somebody can come up and hit a 35, 40 million dollar contract, which pushes the level of contracts up. To right. Well, I think I think this offseason, too, and, and there's a lot of different variables that are going to, like, affect this, mm-hmm. one of them being the CBA. There's a lot of guys who are like up for big money. Yeah. Right? You got your Baez, your Correa's, you know, Marcus Simeon, Jarvis Story, Corey yep. Seager, like people who are gonna push the number some way. Um, I do think just from what I've been kind of reading and stuff that the Mets are gonna look at it as they overpaid for Lindor mm-hmm. at the when all is said and done, because I don't think I don't see Correa getting three hundred million. No. I don't see Seager getting three hundred million nope. and like all of a sudden it's gonna be like, oh the Mets could have just waited, and obviously they would have probably paid less for him because he batted what two forty on yeah. the year. Like, but you know, if the Mets waited, he would have hit like three fifty. And yeah, oh, absolutely. That, that, that's see, everyone was saying. I was like, I, you know, that's exactly. Look at Jose Reyes in his walk year. Yep, dude went off and won a batting title. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember watching that. You people could say that, but the reason he hit so low, I'm not saying the reason he hit so low. That's a hard statement, but my opinion is that he came to New York. People struggle when they come to New York. Yep. Nobody walks into New York as the highest paid guy on the team and just like, I haven't seen it, swoops in and just becomes a stud right away. Mm-hmm. I think Garrett Cole struggled a little early when he first got here, too. Yeah, yeah. he's still struggling, Yeah, which is funny. Yeah. Yeah. But wonder, wonder he's why. still fighting his teammates over Joe. Hello, Dennis, what can I do for you? Hello. I just found something interesting. Uh, apparently, going into next season, the Angels only have five guys that are currently under contract. So they still have to like spend a lot of money. They only have five guys under contract? That's what it looks like Otani, here. Trout. Uh, so Trout at uh, his base salary is thirty five million next year. Uh-huh. Rendon's is thirty six million. Justin Upton twenty eight million. Shohai five point five million, and David Fletcher at four million. Everyone else looks like they're arbitration type things. Okay. Yeah. So they got a lot of work to do. But I, pray for the okay, like I just don't see them being able to afford both and making a World Series run. Can they have both on the team? Probably, but then they're going to have twenty guys. You know up for grabs every mm-hmm. year and be flip-flopping the team around. Yeah, and that's that's really there. They, they need to bring in two pitchers that are making 20 to 25 mil a year. Yep. So that's going to eat yep. up a lot of the stuff, that, too. I, that's somewhere I could see Stroman going to. Yeah. Could see it, but... I mean, I could see it. Does he... I, I think he's smart enough to see what Trout's been going through out there, though. Mm-hmm. And do you trust that? Did, Arenado didn't trust the Rockies. Right. Oh no, absolutely. You no, know, they they say they could say, "Oh, we're going to we're going to build around you and build you a championship team." And they just some teams just don't. They but, can't. And do that's it why I could I, I could see him going there is because I think I mean us sitting here recognize that their pitching staff is hurting. Yeah. So, they need someone. I mean, he's the number 1, obviously. He's by far their number 1 if he goes over there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that, that's where I'm like he can be their star. It's a similar size market where they're not the number 1 team in the market, but they're there yeah. and kind of, you know, he it's, could help them out a lot and mm-hmm. kind of see where it goes. But I I think a lot of guys think, I mean, from guys I'm talking to that I know um, with the Mets, it's going to, everything goes back to the stupid Mets. It's, it's, it's the, off. The dumbass but Mets. A, a lot of like players that I don't know, I'm just hearing from guys that I do, like mm-hmm. they don't not want to be involved, but like when the Mets finally win, like a lot of people are sniffing that it's like kind of coming. They're, they're getting closer. They'll make moves mm-hmm. over the next few years. And I think a lot of guys want to be part of that. Yes. And because I mean, after watching that, the uh, ESPN special, I would too. Winning oh, in New York 86? looks like fun. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> that sure. looks like a blast. Please. So, but, so before this season started, like the Mets and the Yankees both looked really good. Yes. And I was like, this might be the closest we've had to like okay, we could have like a Subway Series type yeah, thing. Yeah. And I was very young for that, mm-hmm. but I want that to happen so unbelievably badly yeah. because it would be so epic. If the Mets lost, that would hurt so much yeah, more. Yeah, I was just old enough to be hurt by that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had, I had like a – this is going to make me sound old. I had a VHS from that season of like like the hype – 
I have the, the VHS video. from '96 and '98. I've all. Well, like it was just, it was just one video that like about their season, and I used to watch it on repeat yeah. as a kid because like it was just like yeah. this awesome baseball video. So o- once I got old enough, I had watched it so many times. Like I know how much that hurt. Yeah. I know that I wanted to throw you're, hands. You're re-hurt. I wanted now. to fight Roger Clemens. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, stop Pi- Piazza. I'll handle it. Yep. Like, but uh, yeah, I mean, it could happen if the I mean the Yankees resigning Boone won't help them, but. What do you th- so you don't you don't like that that move? I don't think anybody that even likes the I don't even like the Yankees. I don't think anybody that likes the Yankees even likes the move. But, but who would you have brought in then? I mean, there are a bunch of guys. I, I don't know specifically who for him, but like Boone just doesn't. Would you have gone like the older manager approach? I I love that approach and it's working. Mm-hmm. It, look at the playoff teams. I mean, it's worked. Yeah. Um, analytics is great, but you still need like a feel for the game. Boone, I don't think has. Like, a lot of the new managers don't have a feel for the game. Louie, I love Louie. Um, he did, when I played for him, had more of a feel, but it's gone. Like, he, he, you, know, you have to be so deep into the analytics and everything's right. just on. This his is how feel, it but is. it's also, like, the analytics department's in his ear more. Oh, right? well, you, but he has to also listen. Like, he's right. not. Right. he he's hasn't been around to. long yes. enough. Yeah. Like, Tony La Russa or Dusty Baker would be like, piss off. Like, yep. I'm making this call right now. Mm-hmm. And you see a lot better in-game management with hitters staying in, pitchers. Who they, uh, like, the Braves kept... Who was it? Sandker? No, I know the manager. They kept um, – was it Morton in to pitch? How long did Morton go in the first game? The first game he went three innings, but he snapped his no, leg. No, it was somebody uh, – maybe it was oh, the next oh, guy, oh, whatever. Oh, Minter. Minter, yeah. Yes, they yes, they yes. kept him in to hit. Louis wouldn't have done that. He would have yep, pinched it out. Gone immediately. Yep, that's, absolutely. that's like an old-school field mm-hmm. call that a lot of these guys that have built – managers have been around. Guillen's going to be the same thing even when he goes in. He's going to – he's been around so long that he's going to have his own say. Mm-hmm. And that's somebody I would have brought into the Yankees. Somebody that, yeah, we'll take your advice on the analytics or whatever, but, like, when it comes down to this, I'm doing this. Boone's not that guy. Right. I don't think he's going to be that guy. It, and I, I think it, it definitely has Girardi was more of that guy, and that's why they didn't like oh, him. Oh, I, want, I wanted Girardi to come to the Mets when yeah. he was available. That, would, that made me sad. Not anymore. He gets thrown out every Met game. Now he's a Philly, so. Yeah, well, no, that, that, now he's tainted. <laughs> yeah, can't, I hate can't him. do that. No, I'm kidding. Would, but, you, would, you, would you bring in Beltron? I, why not? Everybody else is back. Everybody uh, yeah. else from that whole thing is back in the and, game, and so I why think, not? Like, he's obviously – he's not, like, an old manager, but no. he's apparently a baseball genius. He's, like, a baseball guy. It's another new manager, which but I I'm think not he, pumped about. He but brings a different level di- than, yeah. than some other – like, than, well, he, he no pl- offense to Louie. Like, no, yeah. It's but definitely a different level. Carlos played and was around it right. more. I mean, Louie Louis was always around it, obviously, mm-hmm. um, with, uh, with Moises and yep. Felipe. But um, I would like to see – if it's not, like, an old-school manager, yeah, why not? Why not bring Bill Chime back? Every, yeah. Literally everybody else is back in the game. I feel like he's – like, he's got to be waiting for it. Because yeah. the, the way that this is already, like, going mm-hmm. – uh, also, just separately, I wouldn't mind them signing a manager first. Because it also no, seems I, like it could – Unless it was going to be a package deal or something. Sure. But, but like, I could see it – because then it's at that point, it's like, okay, if you bring in your manager before your GM, mm-hmm. then they have their own vision of the team, and then you can figure out with the manager who's a GM that will help us give you the right team to go win. Yeah. Because I feel like that's too much of the – and I know people will disagree, and I, I heard a whole interview with Boone saying that he's not like a figurehead type thing, and that's fine. But there is definitely an element to you have to listen to the people above you type thing. Yeah. And so maybe you get, the, you get the manager first and then find them the person above them that yeah. will that they can work well with and not just be like a, yeah. a boss-employee relationship. I think that goes both ways. You, you have to have a manager that's – you know that's going to play well with the GM at the same time as right. well. Right. Well, so that's what I'm saying. So like, like, at, at the end of the day, the, the manager is the one executing your, it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, your GM's just there to. Get he's gonna he's get you the right guys, people. and that's and that's why as as, yeah, as unlikely making, as it seemed like it was going to happen, Cashman wasn't. Cashman was the one that got Boone the team. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But Cashman, I thought it was well, highly. Cashman's not a manager. Cashman's not a manager, but I also didn't did not think he was going to get fired. There was yeah. that seemed very unlikely. I think he's going to be there until he doesn't want to be there. Right. I mean, he's earned it. Yeah. Has he not? Mm-hmm. I think he's everybody. That's why I thought it was Yankee fans complaining because they complain over a ninety yeah. something win season. Mm-hmm. Fire everybody over a ninety something win season. How terrible. The Cashman yes. firing's been overdue though. Yeah. I mean, you look at like those. Has those... he been overdue? Like, why is it overdue for Cashman so to get fired? You're looking at all these signings that they made to create like a second dynasty after yeah. the late nineties. He brought in all these guys, and it just never worked. And he kept spending all this money trading away assets. But that doesn't mean that at the time it wasn't the right move. It didn't work out. But 
I mean, what if it worked out? You can't, it's not, Cashman's That's not the, playing. Yeah, yeah. Cashman could... Listen, if you're a GM of a team and player A, B, and C are available, and they're the best three players, and you go get them, you just did your job as GM. If they show up and stink for three years... That's why I didn't... It put, like, like, it's not Cashman. Like, it's not the GM's fault. You did literally the best thing you can do and brought in That's why I didn't... People. As I know you said, like, you want to get rid of Boone. That's why I didn't think it was Boone's fault. At the end of the day, like, they played like shit. No, but if they want to get well, back to like what they used to do in, and win, yeah. they need a manager that can manage. Mm-hmm. Especially in the playoffs. It needs, you need a little bit more. I, you I, you I, can't I be pulling a starter in the second inning when he's dealing because analytics says that the next guy coming up will hit worse against another guy. Yeah, I hate that. Yeah. I hate that. Like, the, when, when they won, they had guys going seven, eight, nine innings. Mm-hmm. It's not going to happen anymore like it used to. That's just nope. the way the game went. But, like, you still need a manager in there to be like, listen, I'm not pulling my starter in the second inning. He just struck out the side two innings in a row. I'm going to let him take in a bat. It's an out, whatever. And they'll go back out. Like, mm-hmm. it's the way baseball is played sometimes. Yep. I mean, because, listen, you can put your pinch hitter in, but they can get out, too. They've been sitting right. on the bench doing nothing. Yeah. Like, you can put the best hitter in the game, and sometimes they're going to get out. The 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 feel of the game and those decisions are definitely a, a fading art. Yeah, which is sad. But then you also Fast see the guy. Fading art. Yes, and but you also then you get your the, like you're saying you got we got older managers coming back in that do know how to do this. Yeah. That's why I'm I'm all for an immediate success. Yes. Yep. And, and I'm all for bringing somebody back like a like a Buck Walter or yeah. somebody like that. I'm, I wouldn't I'm, hate if I'm, the Mets went after him. I'm down for that, but I think. On the flip side, we also need to make some moves roster wise. Oh, oh well, yeah, that's. Yeah. Yeah, that's. I mean, without saying, you need to. All right. Nail down a lot of stuff. Just because I think this is funny, and then we're gonna get all in on the match, just because we're we're Yay. almost we're almost there. We've been just kind of Woo. brushing over it. Been right. On How the edge. hilarious is it that the Cleveland Guardians haven't even put on a jersey yet and are already getting sued for their name? Which, by the way, in my own opinion, I think is the most unoriginal name they could have possibly come up with. Yeah, that wasn't. Was that an old Cleveland name? Did they use that at some point? Or somebody use that? It's it's it was in uh, like the, the AAF the, that football. new football team. Yeah. They had that. I think the XFL has a Guardians. Oh, okay. So like, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's it's super it, funny. It's like a fake name in all the video games. Like guys, this is. It, it. sounds like a Will Ferrell movie. Yeah. Like a roller the derby guy. team yep. is suing an MLB team. Yes. No. Absolutely. It's like, is this for yeah. real? Like how how. How comedic it sounds like Tropic be? Thunder meets Major League. Yes. Yep. <laughs> That'd be an awesome movie. The, or or the Flint Tropics. Like, yeah. Like I'm all putting sudden, it out there. Somebody should make that movie. A roller derby team. A roller, fights. like literally, just make a movie just make about this, this and have Will Ferrell be the owner of the roller derby team. That'd be <laughs> 100%. awesome. One hundred percent. Will Ferrell on Twitter that has to be tweeted immediately <laughs> yeah. after the show. That would be amazing. <laughs> that would be so. But yeah, what they offered him decent money too for a roller derby team, right? Yeah, it's just a money grab, right? Like, I mean, what didn't they offer? What they offer him fifty thousand or something? Something they like that. Something. But it's like, guys, you, you, they also funny. don't even like actually own the name. Yeah. Oh yeah. They like, just the paperwork is not submitted. Like it doesn't. It doesn't exist. It's just right. a team name. That It'd be like if I had a thirteen year travel team yeah. and it's called the New York Mets and then I sued the Mets. Like right. no. Little league, team, little league teams are going to start suing every other big league team. Yeah, all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, we're wearing well, your we're jersey, so we own the Mets. The Mets. Okay. Um, that's yeah, it's super funny. I'm, I'm excited to see how they pay out for that. Yeah, and just like it, like, like seriously, what, what can you cap that out at? A hundred thousand? You can't go over a hundred thousand, can you? I, honestly, I think even that's a stretch. I know it is, but just to like, get them, like away just from to get them to stop. Yeah, like, just to get them to stop. Like, all right, whatever. Yeah, no, that's I. I wanted them to be the Cleveland Spiders, in my opinion. That I thought I thought that was a better, better a little name. more unique thing. Like Guardians is so basic. Yeah, like, guys. The Guardians. I'm like, how are you gonna have, have good uniforms when it just says Guardians? It's gonna on be it? like they're just like redoing the Indian, the word Indians with Guardians, uh, same font, like same color. Like really? Every, yeah, it's, it's just gonna look. It's bad. gonna be very boring. That's gonna be very. Like, you're yeah. not even gonna rebrand and do something cool, like create a cool logo or something. It's gonna be a very average thing. No. Yeah. That's unfortunately. Terrible. Okay. That's time. We're opening the door. Dennis. We're in. Sound the alarm. Floodgates are in. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mets GM search is going horribly. Awful. Terrible. Yep. Billy Bean. I don't want to come there because I got daughters. I'm not moving. Theo Epstein. Is that what he said, by the way? I didn't. Yeah, that, that was that his was thing. His... He's like, I got a family. I got I a... mean. It, it, he said it's pure, it was purely out of ego if he wants to do it, do it because he's like making right. plenty of money. Like there's no reason to do it yeah. other than to do it. Um. Theo Epstein yeah, yeah. didn't want to, but I think he wants to be commissioner. Fair enough. It, he yeah, should be. At, would so anybody other anybody than Manfred? Else, yeah. um, David Stern said no. Gomes or Gomez said no. Scott Harris said no. And then the Matt Arnold, who the Mets spoke to, and I think 10 minutes later it was 
it, it was a thing that he was on the table. Ten minutes later, he's not on the table yeah. anymore. And then also he has an extension. Yep. Like like that. that. So what, why is it? Because we were talking about this did, on our last did episode. Did Stern say no or did he just – they didn't give him permission. They didn't give him permission okay, or something yeah. like that, yeah. Um, why do you think it is that nobody wants this job? I don't know, especially considering that, like – they basically, have, I, I should have this job. I mean, it's ridiculous that I'm not mm-hmm. hired yet. <laughs> um, I, I don't understand why somebody wouldn't want to come in with an owner with basically blank checks in his pocket that you could do whatever you want with and win in New York. I don't understand it. Mm-hmm. The only thing I could think of is possibly that Sandy and his son being part of some of the process or Sandy being part of the process and his son being in the organization still. Um possibly they don't fully trust that they're going to have complete control and that, you know, Steve or somebody might default back to one of the Aldersons for plans. And these are big, big time guys that are going to come in and get paid big and want to make big decisions on their own and not Mm -hmm. deal with that. Also, I think if they had a manager at the time, that would help. You know, if, like you said before, if they hired a manager and one of these guys loved that manager and wanted to be part of it, I think that would help them. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing, I, I mean, I can't think of a reason why outside of possibly that, the, you know, that Sandy's still part of the process of hiring them. And I don't want to say it looks weak on the Mets, but like stopped the Mets since I've been, you know, when I was back playing with them, it seems like they recycle players, personnel, like mm-hmm. they let, they, they release guys and like a year later, like, oh, hey, what's up, man? Like, you're back, okay. Yeah. Like, they're who, just back. Who were we re- – I want to say, like, from like, – Ty Kelly, I mean – Ty Kelly. Uh, w- Kelly, Kelly Johnson. Johnson brought, yes. We, we traded year. three of our best prospects for Kelly Johnson three times. Yep. Um, uh, uh, John, yeah, John Gant went for him. Akil Morris went for mm-hmm. him, a bunch of guys. Um, Waylon went for him. Um, who else was it? I mean, Familia keeps coming back. Yep. But, but there was just, like, guys that – and but they do the same thing, like – the, they're going to do the same thing as Santa. Like they just default to who they trust. It mm-hmm. seems like. Well, you, you were, we were, uh, we were texting about they wanted to kind of bring in other people from within the organization to come do it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, guys, we yeah. need, we need an outside perspective. Look at Ian Levin's great, but he's great at what he does now. Yep. Let, let's get somebody that is like a, a high. Uh, I mean, Levin's a high level baseball guy, but like these guys are like good. Mm-hmm. There's no learning curve. They're jumping right in, ready to go. Yep. I, I think Alderson's definitely a. Uh, an obstacle there. I think it yeah. also can't, like like Steve Cohen seems like he's handling the majority of it, and or Sandy's like bringing him candidates. Yeah. But then it's like, well, Sandy's bringing you candidates, and they're still saying no. Be and it very well could be because of Sandy. Yeah, I, I think they're kind of walking I, into it hoping that they're going to have the control, and then Sandy's going to. I don't of know go specifically away. Sandy himself. I I know that people in the organization love his son as well. Okay. So I think that's more of the problem. Not that they're worried that some kids, you know, he's going to take my job, whatever, but, like, that they're still – like, Sandy's still going to have his say through his son in mm-hmm. in the ear of trusted people. Yeah. So, like, if if you're one of these – if you're Billy Bean or Theo Epstein, are you going to come in and want Sandy's son chirping at you? No, or, no definitely not, not. Not that he's going to do it in that For way. For sure, but, but like, like – uh, like, uh, I want to come in and, like – say what I say and like I said I'm not dealing with this or that or like yep. they want to come in and do their job and I think it has to be that way you're it's yeah. it's not just like you're not coming into the Pittsburgh Pirates like it's the right. Mets you're in New York you have to come in and have a grip on what you're doing mm-hmm. and our last couple of GMs have not really done that they've right. gotten drunk or done a terrible job so yeah uh, we, we need some you we hire need. an agent to, you know they tried they tried to mix it up mm-hmm. but you need somebody like you need somebody who knows what they're doing, and and without the learning curve. Yep, and and they've interviewed I think the right people so far. Yeah. But nobody wants to do it, and it's it, I think we're all getting to the what's, point what's now. What's going on with uh, what's his face, um, Sabian? The Giants sold the GM. Oh, I don't know. Well, Did, I mean, they just, didn't they, he come out and say that he he would take the Mets job? And I don't know. Deez, can you look that up? I'm pretty sure that. How you spell his name? S a b e a n, I think. Brian. Is that he was when the Giants won back in you know, like the 14, mid. 16. Yeah, okay. he, he was their GM, and I'm pretty sure he said. But I think they were still going after Matt Arnold at the time, so maybe they pushed him off. As of 12 hours ago, he was not on the Mets' radar during the search. Right. Of course. Why would he be? But I, I believe he came out and was like, "I would, I would do that," and mm-hmm. I don't know why they wouldn't look into him. Uh, he Listen. said he would consider running the operations. Right. So it doesn't sound like GM, but maybe no, like but a president, president of baseball operations. He has to take that's Sandy's job. Yeah. Yeah. 
which I mean, has which to he be claims vegan. he doesn't want. Also, yeah. Well, so, so, well, he was kind of pushed into it because of all the BS that they went through this yep. year. Oh yeah. So which I, you is know, health wise, also, I I don't I really don't think he wanted that job, but I think he's no. Just, I mean, he's he's he like seventy to. something years old. He yeah. doesn't want to do they it. They probably right paid him up too to mm-hmm. take after that. They're like, yo, listen, we. we so I'm sure he really didn't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, because that was a that was a nightmare. Look at all the crap he has to deal with. Yep. He's old. He doesn't want to deal with that anymore. Yep, absolutely. And it's like, well, we're we're just kind of keep walking down the list. I don't know who else. Is there anybody else, like you just said, Sabian, anybody else you could think of that's, like, competent? I feel like what they need is somebody who has a grip on the game and yeah. wouldn't it would be aggressive. And, and this is something that I, I heard, uh, I think it was Michael K talking about it, and it's so true. The majority of, like, and I think it's also partially why the Mets are having so much trouble, is that, like, young executives now are – risk averse Mm -hmm. they all like and this is we'll get to bill's thing in a second because bill is the exact opposite of risk averse yeah um they all want to hold on to their prospects they all want to make like they don't want to pay big money they Mm -hmm. don't want to make like the 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 aggressive moves and i think the mets need an aggressive gf you need a you need a theo epstein or a yeah like i I mean honestly i would love if they could hire d podesta back from the bears or wherever he is now Mm -hmm. but i don't think he wants to leave football now yeah and I don't think we'll come well, back to Well, that's the problem. Mets, it's like they're going after people who are already in good situations. Like, right. like we went Every after single two, one of these guys don't need this job. Yep. We went to two guys on the Brewers who are on the cusp. Like, yeah. they're, what, are they going to leave that situation to Can go to the Mets? we get some the of the Mets Rays guys? Show? They always do well. Yep. Let's, get, let's get somebody from the Rays. Anybody I, from the Rays. We will take anybody from your front I mean, office. the guy who, like, cleans the towels. Bring him. Like, Seriously, I, I would take he has him to know. He's got to know the stuff. He's been listening. Anybody that's ever worked in the Rays organization. Have you seen that stadium? Those walls definitely are thin. He's got to know everything. Yeah. Like... I would take anybody that's ever walked into that stadium, actually. It's probably better than whoever yeah. they're hiring. Yep. <sighs> yeah, I hope they figure it out. And then, you, you know, obviously, we have Well, the, that's what drives me crazy, that teams like Tampa and, like, Houston can figure it out and figure yep. it out so well. Yep. But, they, but that's the thing. And so they, quick. How bad were those teams 10 years ago? They were so bad. And listen, they lost their GM, too. The yeah. Strohs lost their GM, and they're still fine. So right. who who in their pipeline of people can we just you, pick out? We can hire that guy back, but I don't think that's going to work out. I, well, <laughs> I, Luna. Who? Oh goodness! Somebody did he get a lifetime ban? Or no, I don't think so. He's just blackballed I don't think anyway. So, but we don't we don't need that. Yeah, in, we we already have a toxic situation. Bring him and Beltran in, and there you go. Beautiful. Well, there we go. That's it. <laughs> well, I think somebody in the Mets organization is like friends with that guy, and I Probably. and I think uh, like someone even put it out there of like that concept, yeah. and no, 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 thank <laughs> no. no, thank you. Yeah. There's, I would rather. That's too much distraction for New York. Yeah, well, I mean, we're. Already... He's got to go to like Kansas City if he wants to start back up, where people are just like, not on social media yet. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or the, <laughs> like the Twins or something. Yeah, somewhere, some, somewhere low. You got to go key. somewhere very far you can't away come from to New everyone York and else. restart. That. Yes, no, no, no. I don't know what they're gonna do. Okay, so <laughs> let's let, let's uh, let's flip the coin now. So let's say, by the grace of God, Steve Cohen sees your tweet. And you're yeah. brought in next week as the Mets GM. Yeah. What what are what are your moves? I'm really hoping they just play well next year, so I don't have to do anything. That would be great. <laughs> that's, we that's keep a, the same. That would team. be ideal. Same team. I'm not doing anything. Same team. We go win the World just Series. Really we had it right hope last year. Play, yep. And I luck out. I just hope everybody has fun. Yeah. Thank you for exactly. hiring me. Yep. <laughs> so I'm taking a fraction of the price. I'm not making the executive moves. Mm-hmm. Alderson Sun can do that. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, listen. They they I think. Solidifying third base would help them. Um, there are a few options for that. Obviously, I would love Correa. Um, so, so, see, I, I like that move. Yeah. So, so you, so you, right off the bat, you're already going to be you're against Bill's plan. And for the people who missed, what is Bill? M- yeah, missed I'm last a, week's episode. Yeah, I'm, I'm against Bill's plan. That's Bill's read, plan. read Bill's plan. I put a quick note on there. <laughs> Inject youth into Mets with Beatty, Vientos, Lee for 22. All those are three of the Mets' top prospects. Yeah. For anybody who doesn't know, right? No. That's no. terrible. <laughs> That's a terrible idea. Would you bring any That's of Gavin Sacchini all over again. That's yeah. going to be like, you're going to bring these guys up, and they're going to suck for two years because they're not ready yet. And then they'll end up not playing baseball anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't, no. You, may, I mean, at some point, sure, if they're ready. If they're mm-hmm. if they're repeating next year, I mean, they're all killing it right now. I could see one of those quality. guys being a September call-up next yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're I all killing it in the fall. Or, or like, an, like, God forbid, somebody goes down, Nimmo, whatever, and – you need somebody filling in mm-hmm. for someone. I mean, they're, they're hitting. They're all mashing, 100%. All mashing. And low-key, those guys could all be fill-ins in the outfield. Yeah, but if you are if you want to make a World Series run for 2022, are those your guys? No. No. You, you need 
But that's I'll bring so, back so the Giants Bills, again. You need big leaders. So Bill's thing also is to punt 2022 because of all of our issues with management and everything. Punt 2022. Put Bill a bunch of youth guys in. Bill has terrible plans. I may never be invited back. This is awful, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> so he wants to punt 2022, inject the youth, have them give them a whole season to figure it out, and then go in for 2023. Yeah. No, I, see, I like bringing youth guys up when they're going on a run. Like, if all three of those guys are called up in September with the Mets in the middle of a playoff run, that's going to do so much more for their careers Yes. than bringing them up and punting 2022. You bring them up in a season where you're just quitting and you're just like, that. Ah, that's their first experience in the big leagues. Mm-hmm. Do you want that? Do you want that mindset out of your best players you bring the, coming bring up? guys up. You move got, you moved half yeah. the team. Do you want your top three coming up in a blah year or do you want them coming up and seeing a playoff race and wanting that for the rest of their careers? Yep. That's why I other agree. teams are better. Okay, cool. So we now have the opposite side Listen of Bill's plan. Steve Cohen. What? I said, listen to that, Steve listen Cohen. Listen to that, Steve Cohen. Uh, okay, cool. So you want to spend money. I, I mean, or, listen, or it doesn't wanna, have to be a crazy – I mean, Okay, fine. So, but get, you want to go in for 2022 and make an effort to win the World Series yes, next year. Okay, cool. For sure. So you want – so obviously the checks are as big as they come. Mm-hmm. Who, who are we bringing in? You said Correa. I, I would like to bring in Correa. Um, I would like for them to go out and get, like, Gosman if they can. Like, just bolster down the pitching staff as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with Noah coming back off – Surgery, you know, that's kind of have a hangover year. The year that you really get like, your first full season back, you don't know mm-hmm. how your arm's going to hold up. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm sure they'll extend uh, our uh, qualifying. Yeah, yeah no, him. for sure. And I hope he takes it. I hope I'm he doesn't. I'm sure he will coming like, off of that. Because yeah. once again, you knows if he has a great year, which and I'm sure he'll strive to make big money. Yep. And another reason why you're going to waste a good year with Noah if you're trying to punt 2022. Like, what if he comes out and lights it up because he has to? Yep. That's his one. This is his one chance to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, with tired, you know, he'll go through a dead arm phase. He'll go through phases where you're going to need somebody else. Like when DeGrom went down this year, they had nobody there. I mean, Stroman, yes. But, like, they didn't have another guy that was like, all right, we have a win. Like, we're winning. At least we know in two days we're winning that game. Yep. Like, let's go out and get it. Mm-hmm. Um, so they only had Stroman to fall back on, which is one. When they were in first place, they had two. If they had three, imagine what they'd be. Like, if they had a third I mean, guy. The, fir- the first half pitching yeah. for the Mets was – if, Ridiculous. If they if you can go into a three game series and have the right pitchers lined up and now your hitters are going in saying we're sweeping the series because these like they're not gonna hit these three guys, all we need to do is score a couple runs a night, mm-hmm. that changes the entire season, it changes your attitude. Yep. It changes everything. So I don't th- I think they're maybe two two to three moves away. They're not far. I mean if Who from the current roster are you moving on from? I'm moving on from? Or trading for pieces, or I, I would obviously love we have to get Conforto. a better catcher if we can get McCord McCann. I, I would keep Nito. I love. Yes, I mean personal and but as a baseball player. <laughs> no, I, I agree. But Keeping I, Nito, I, I would think is Nito. the thing. I, I yeah. Honestly, just get like the oh, Puerto, the get the Puerto Rican national team. I didn't even put that on there. So hundred percent. So <laughs> like, I'm so, not even so joke, my thought was so mess. for like manager perspective. If we brought in Beltron, yeah, I think that also creates an opportunity to go out and get Correa. Correct. Just. Just yeah. right there, yeah, yeah. and but and yes, g- give me half the Puerto Rican team. They're disgusting. They're so Let's good. go. I would I would love. I agree. Third base needs to be fixed. Yeah, I think Correa or Bryant potentially. Uh, I've been saying this a lot too. I would like to ma- take a stab at Castellanos. Yep. Move on from love Conforto. Castellanos. I think he brings so yeah. much more to the table, especially for the Mets. Mm-hmm. Um, I love Castellanos. He's yeah, that would be a great sign for him. I, I just – I mean, with Cassiano's helps, but, like, I can't see them winning World Series at Dom Smith and left. Mm-hmm. He's, he's not a left – he's not an outfielder. Nope. It amazes me that he's – I mean, I love Dom, but it amazes me that he's getting innings in the outfield. I understand why, because they want him in the they lineup. Bat, yep. But, like, not not a major league outfielder. And especially not, not a World Series caliber outfielder. So yep. they need to do – they need to solidify that. Like, you can't have these joke – I don't want to call them a joke you know, lineups, but sometimes they are. Like some of the lineups the Mets were throwing out there were insane. Oh, especially early. But the thing was somehow it worked with the bench mob. The, the bench mob was killing, killing it, and, and that was the problem too. Is and why I didn't totally fault Rojas for the failure. Yeah, is like you got you guys had half the team injured. You put yeah. a bunch of randoms out there, and they were better they, than the, they the starting team. They held it, yeah. And so the, and it's like the you starters can, came back. You can't they, complete even remotely justifying keeping that lineup in long term. Yeah, but. Somehow it was working, yeah. so... But but in the beginning, before it worked, that was a joke. I mean, it was a joke lineup until it wasn't. So it's so not really... Five years like, from now, someone's going to look at June 18th right. lineup and, and be they're like, going to be like, this was a team? Like what? And they were in first place at the time? Yep. Yeah. And they played for months like that. Mm-hmm. 
But I, I think they need to put out it, – it's been a long time since I've gone to a Mets game and saw, like, a big league lineup for a Mets team. Yep. Like, they, why do we still have this problem? Like, why are they still playing, you know, 4A guys that are up and down? Like, you're the New York Mets. You have Steve Cohen as your owner. Get yeah. the GM in, get somebody in, and get a big league team and win. That's it. Yeah. That, that, that's, and, and, again, that's it's so, not eight moves. It's probably two. That, probably that's, three. That's why I don't – understand the gm thing is like you don't actually have to come in and make any crazy like no. like you don't have to think that hard a pitcher an outfielder a third baseman yeah or two and, sp- and you can sp- and, and you have unlimited you have yeah. pretty much unlimited right. unlimited money and as steve cohen even said i'm not going to just spend like wastefully right but those moves are not going to be wasteful but he'll spend for the right the right pe- and they yeah. are absolutely the right people especially right. You, you bring in a guy like correa i think it, i mean honestly correa or brian bring the same kind of attributes to the yeah. table postseason experience i just like correa i like just correa more i think he has a little more he'll gel obviously with the infield yep. a little better yeah i think and he, he i like his fire i think that's really what the mets yeah. need yep. and why i love give give me bias give me bias yeah. for long term give me correa for long term like they're all in the same age so bracket. many upset mets fans they're gonna get thumbs down again and oh no they're, they're gonna be so did upset we have you on the, for that yep Okay. Sure did. Oh yeah, that's right. That, that was a while. That, that was so <laughs> that long was ago. Low key, it was like two months They're ago. They're gonna get so like hurt over all the passion that's shown on the field. Oh, God. <laughs> as soon as we brought him, in, I was like, lock him up long yeah. term. All I yes. to, all I wanted to see was a better. Approach it's, it's a from problem him. when our fans are like, send him back to Chicago, and the Cubs fans were like, okay, thank you. Like we want. Like, we, yeah, we'll take our like, top we'll three shortstop back. in the league. That's now your second baseman. Yeah, sure. And, and figured out how to not swing at trash all the time. Yep. Oh, oh, please. When he started actually hitting like. He should be. Yeah. I was like, give him all the money. Yeah. Give, sure. And then if, it's if like, we oh, look, get, we still have billions of dollars left if we I want mean, to. I mean, if we get Beltran, I mean, not Beltran, would be your, yeah, manager. Uh, if we get Correa in a third, best infield in baseball, in my what opinion. What would you pay Correa? Because, I mean, if we bring in Correa, it's an expensive buy. Yeah. Um, I would assume he's going to be close to Baez. Oh. Can if, you justify spending that much money on your infield? Yeah. Yeah. What about because it's not just like you're not paying for Ray Ordonez, you're paying for a guy that's gonna ball out every game yep, and yep. mash. Okay, so yeah, would I would I pay that for a defensive shortstop? No, no, no. oh no, definitely not. I, but I, I, I don't would pay, need like Trey Turner. Say, would you pay Trey Turner? That yeah, Trey, Trey Turner's gonna get the bag next year, right? Absolutely. I, I would absolutely pay for somebody that brings the Do- that move by the Dodgers yeah. was so smart. Yep, they got another year. And they basically said, Seeker, you have zero leverage. Yeah. We'll pay you league minimum well, if you guys, want." Guys like Correa, Turner, Baez, like. Even by Baez strikes out a lot. That's everybody complains. But he won four games on crazy slides that he did. Mm-hmm. Like he he creates wins by himself. Yes, absolutely. That's so. 100%. Do I care that he strikes out all the time if he's hitting two sixty with all the home runs? No, I don't care what his outs were. Nope, don't um, care. I care that he. Won I would those, like him I care to that he won those games because he's a yes, great. I care he won player. those games, yeah. and overall, I think his approach was not good last year. I only need the, a little bit of a change. The, just a his smidge. approach with the Mets was the best it's been in his whole career. And, and the second when he first got yeah. there it wasn't as good, but no, second half like out. the last couple months when he hit like beautiful. when he hit over 400 for Yeah, those, yeah, I'm mashing. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, pay and he, him. And he wasn't swinging at stuff. He yep. wasn't swinging at everything. And I think all it took was somebody probably just telling him like, "Hey, yeah. like when it's 3-0, but, maybe just take the pitch." Yeah. But that's why, why guys like Correa, guys like that are worth I would pay them. Yes. Because they create it's more than just, "Oh, like like the Brant- Brantley never got that money, even though he hits over three hundred every year. I would, year. I would get, I would pay Brantley so much money. Yeah, but he never got that money because he doesn't yes. come out and create wins like that. He's, he doesn't. He comes out and does a job and he hits well, mm-hmm. but he doesn't change the game. Yeah, it's he doesn't have that for, same um, external effect. Right. Yeah, but like he, on field, he's batting whatever. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's doing and everything. But, I mean, he's never done much wrong. He's yep. he's been great his whole career. Yes. Um, but he doesn't have that like. I just won that game for us because of something cool, crazy that I did. Yes. And the X that's factor. that's right. And that's yep. why Correa is gonna get paid. That's why I would absolutely give it to him. Yep. And and what's so wild to me is I don't think he's gonna get paid by the Astros. Even if he not. if he carries them to the World Series right now, I still don't think he gets paid no, by the yeah, Astros. No. Just based on what they first extended to him. When it was like I think it was like six years one sixty or something. Mm-hmm. Like I know tampering is frowned upon in baseball and illegal, but like I hope Lindor is tampering right now. I oh <laughs> and I'm doing his work. I hope they're FaceTiming every yeah. day. Like, yo, listen, I got my hand in his pocket. Man. I hope he has a new watch in his locker every single day. Yes, yep. And they're all blue and orange Rolexes. Yep, absolutely. Exactly. 
Yeah. So I, I would love – that would be my main move. Would, so, is so what pitching – you said Gosman. I also wouldn't – I like Gosman. Yeah. I, I don't think he'd come to the Mets, but I'd like to see Robbie Ray give it a yeah. shot because he's, I think, a little like more high upside too. lefty than Steven Matz was and definitely higher upside than yeah. Rich Hill. That's another thing we're missing, lefties. Yeah, we had nothing. Yeah, we got nothing. nothing. But we had we had one in the pen, and then Who? one on loop. Oh, yeah. Give Loop all the money too. I love Loop. I love Loop. Gangster. Pain Bush and lights beer. all day. And beer. Yes, for real. Yeah, I'll take half my contract in. He's Bitcoin. got money. You just supply him with beer for the rest of his life. Seriously. Get yeah, well, a Bush light vending machine in this locker yeah. right next right to him. Next You're good. <laughs> yes, let's give him a double locker. One with a vending machine. Yes. In yeah, Loop. You have to keep. But like, yeah, you you need. You need a stud third baseman, a stud outfielder, a stud starter. Do you go? Do you go center fielder or corner? I mean, I would, I would love to push Nemo to the corner. I would like to push Nemo to the corner. Unfortunately, he is injury prone, but I wouldn't mind getting Buxton. Yeah, I like Buxton too. I, but, I think a great defensive outfielder, especially. I mean, listen, if we're going to lose Conforto, he's not like the best defensive outfielder, but he throws out guys no, he, no he's very time. good yes he's very good his he, great arm so like we, we need somebody with the arm like that nimmo's arm's not like no, elite a, he doesn't have an elite people. arm yeah same with smith that's that's the problem with having both of them in the outfield it's like any ball in the gap extra base like yep. they're not throwing you out yep um but yeah i i mean i've always wanted blackman is it too late to get blackman now i don't know <sighs> but like i, I mean, i've wanted blackman the last like five years so I bad love blackman. And, and and he's he a free agent I don't know. He, has, he seems like he's always a free agent. Does, I don't know if he just signs like, a short I, so extensions like, or if, not. So, like, if I was going to go for, like, a veteran presence. Or he's always available for trades. Corner like outfield isn't a bad spot because you don't need them to do too much. Yeah. They can kind of yeah, figure it out. Yeah, you You could put – I mean, you could slide Nimmo over to left and kind of figure out who has – get somebody with a good arm and right. 100%. Yeah. You, we need somebody – I mean, especially if we're if we're losing Conforto. If not, whatever. But, like, if, we're, if he's not if signing. He, it feels unlikely. I think he knows that, yeah. too. Yeah. Just because he didn't That's put up dumb. the year that he, he needed. He should take the qualifying offer. He, uh, he's a Boris guy. I know. Yeah, unfortunately, that it, it's that, That's the downside of being a Boris guy, that sometimes... The majority of the time, they're going to be like, I hope it works money. Out, I hope it works out for him, but sometimes it doesn't because mm-hmm. of stuff like that. Like, if he if he doesn't accept it, what's he going to get? I think he'll... Two ways. I think he goes to a small market team and gets, like, a pretty size guy. and be their guy. Yeah. Or he goes to a good team but becomes a I wonder if he goes to Seattle guy. to, like... Be closer to home. It's from Oregon, right? That's right. Oh, yeah. that could be. They, they have a. Uh, wonder if he goes to Seattle. That would, I mean, listen, that, that might push I, them over the edge if he has a good year. Listen, that's that's and actually. Keeps pitching. Yes, and uh, he like technically speaking, he would be like a veteran presence outfielder. Yeah. And been there, knows. This he know. I mean, he knows a bunch of the Mets guys that are over there. Yeah, that's interesting. That's yeah. interesting. Um, what do you think about Jeff McNeil? He, because for me, and I'm so I'm so frustrated by that. Bill wants to just punt him. He wants to because <laughs> like this dude's Bill, hit over Bill's, 350 everywhere, and then just had a bad year. But so, like, I can think, you fault him for and that? And then someone told him, "Yo, if you swing up a little more, you can hit home runs." I want to. Str- I literally want to wanna, strangle him when dude, he does that, dude. He's I, like William Mays Hayes when he showed up with the 15 chains. Yes. He's like, I'm a power hitter now. Like, no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. Stop. Stop. Like they they need to do I that. Make saw him do the entire every time season. I was like, bro. Stop. Yeah, I did. Too. Hit singles. Just yep. hit singles the whole. You'll get a few more. Didn't home he runs. also hit like 15 home runs the year before? Too? Like it's not like he wasn't exactly, hitting any home exactly. runs. Exactly. But then he was like, "Yo, I'm gonna hit 30. Yeah, I'm gonna like hit why? 40. I I'd rather you hit 350. I would absolutely rather you <laughs> yeah. hit 350. That was so frustrating. Seeing he's so him good and so Lemayu like, like go from yo we bat 350 every year yeah. to crap. It was like right. yo something's broken right. here. Um, that whoever allowed that shouldn't have been able to allow that to happen. Like somebody should have taken him and be like, "Yo, cut that out." Yeah, like absolutely. go back to his, don't go back to what you were doing and don't ever change what you were doing. Why don't would you ever, ever change that? All he needed to do was hit singles to the left center field. He wouldn't all be a, day he wouldn't be a big leaguer right now if he did that in the minor leagues. No, I know. Yeah, it's, if, it's, if he had this last year's approach in the minors, he never probably would have cracked double A. Not a chance. No. Because he, he probably batted what like four hundred in the minors or something. He he's, he raked every single year and he yep. complained about it too, which is funny. But he, he's like, I want to hit more home runs. Oh, he was. Uh, who were playing? I think Mike or. Mikey O'Neill, Paul O'Neill's nephew was on like the Yankees A ball team. We were playing them, mm-hmm. and he was struggling. He was hitting like 220, and it was like August, and Jeff was hitting like 368, and he hit an absolute missile line drive to the shortstop. The guy caught it, mm-hmm. but I mean it was crushed. And McNeil like slammed his helmet, went into the dugout, was like cursing. Oh, I love. We this were energy. down. We were yeah. We were down the line, and O'Neill's like, I'm gonna. And punch that kid in the face. Like, I'm hitting 220. This dude's hitting almost 370, and he's bitching about just lacing one of the shortstop. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, I love that energy, too. But, like, that's he has to get back to that. Like, stop trying to – if you don't like getting out, you're going to get out a, a lot yeah, more yeah, yeah. doing what you're doing now. 
it was so like like it was so visibly different. Yeah. And I don't like I don't know. His swing, his swing looked completely completely different. Yeah, like you could so like it was it was yeah, so, back shoulder, yeah, back shoulder coming down and trying to put one into the yeah. what is it the Coca Cola corner yeah, now whatever it is. One they need to the block sodas. it off from him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep. <laughs> find so they, him they for put, like, the horse blinders. Just, find like, right find him for hitting home runs next year. Yep. Find him a hundred bucks per home run. <laughs> He'll still try to hit him, or a thousand bucks per home run. I don't know. He'll still try to hit him, but like, mm-hmm. he, somebody needs to tell him to go back to what he was doing. Yes. And and I and I would keep him around next year. I think for With, me, yeah. the people I'd move on from or try and use as trade pieces. Obviously, I think Conforto's not going to be there. So that's what kills me. All of our trade pieces had terrible years. They're terrible, absolutely terrible. terrible years. But I think JD still has value. Yeah, I think you got to move on from him. Yeah. I I keep Villar because I think he has a little bit great of great off the bench. Great off the bench, X factor. Yeah, and he's, he's a good got clubhouse wheels, guy. good clubhouse. Like, yeah. absolutely love him. I think you need to package JD and Dom. Agreed. And try Dom, and get, yeah, Dom's got to go. And try and get some pitching. Again, good dude. I like it. I, I think somebody's going to do really well with Dom. I, I think yes. that he will go somewhere and do like really. He well. should probably go like to like a, a um, like a lefty specific ballpark. What like do you think? Boston. Like Boston or be a DH. Some, like play first base. I mean, they have Dallas or whatever, but be a DH there if needed. Some, like, uh, yeah, probably American League in general. I mean, he does hook smaller. the ball, so yeah, <laughs> that, that would be a perfect park send him for to, him. Send him the Orioles. Yeah. Like, Camden Yards probably be good for yeah, him. Yeah, that'd be great for him. Then they could use some. I, I think he should just cheap. go to the A. I mean, DA, I mean, hope, hopefully the DH rule kind of comes into play everywhere. Yes. But that think, would also help the Mets. I think if he could just focus on. I mean, he's such a great fielder though at first base. I love Dom's glove at first. Yeah, but, but he's kind of lost. He's lost it over the last few years. So if he yeah. can go focus on and hitting, Pete's gotten better. Yeah, Pete's definitely Agreed. gotten better. And he, yeah, he's he's more than serviceable. Yes. Now. Yeah. Um. But it, yeah, if you bring Dom into a team where he could DH and just focus on hitting, I think. That's and and it won't cost a lot. He'll be on a very team friendly contract. Yes. I, I think that that would be a good pull move for somebody. Yep. I, oh, okay. Here's here's a trade. You tell me if you do this. JD and Dom for John Means. I mean, yeah. You think would they do would that. do that? I don't know if they would do that. I would do it. Yeah, of but, course you. Would. That, that's probably why. I think I think I'm going like, to say they wouldn't do it because I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I yeah, would love yeah, to do that. Yeah. I, I say we just go JD and Dom for Flexen and Seawald. Just get them back from Seattle. <laughs> yeah, but that, 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 when was last? You know how it'll work out. They'll come back here. Oh, they'll come back and they're going to have six ERAs yep. and Paul Seawald's going to forget how to pitch again. I know. Because when he was, was on fun. the bench, it was, it was fun not. to watch them though. I'm, I'm oh happy yeah. For him. Yeah, so it was great. Especially in that playoff run. Hmm. I was I was hoping it's, the Mariners would pull it out, but I know I was too. It was close. Seawald's energy stepped up. I think that helped him out a lot. Mm-hmm. He went crazy on the mound this year. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, JD and Dom definitely. I mean, once again, I wish it was after the 2020 season mm-hmm. where they had just great years. Um, even Jeff, what are we gonna do with him? I I, I want I know they were the testing team. him out and left, but I don't really love that. But again, he's they were, but his arms not crazy. Like he, when he came up, he was a second baseman. And then he is when baseman. I was in Savannah, they moved him to third base, and that was a big adjustment for him. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, towards the end of the year, he was better. But then he kind of never settled in anywhere since. He's mm-hmm. been plotted around the infield, back to the outfield, and he doesn't. I don't think he has the outfield arm, just like no, third no, base. He doesn't not. have the third base arm. Definitely not. Um, so, once again, why are the New York Mets going to settle for bodies out there when you can go get a guy? Well, that, that, like, stop see, putting bodies out that's there. That's the problem. That's the problem. It's like, cool, I love Jeff McNeil. I yeah, love I really want to keep him, I, but like where? Where I'm, I'm trying to win games. I'm trying to win championships, and he's right. just not gonna. Like, I'd rather have Javi Baez. Yeah. I'd rather go get a legitimate Correct. left fielder. And I'd rather go get Carlos. And Correa. he's much more valuable trading him than he is sitting on our bench. Yep, and then he's a depreciating asset at that point. Yeah. And it's like we keep him, and he right. hits like shit, and we're really screwed. We still, you know, right now, if you get rid of him, you still have teams where their hitting coaches are like, "Let me get him back to like I know I can get him back there." So he still, he still, even though he had a rough year, he still mm-hmm. has a lot of value. And I think that also is part of the issue is that we had a hitting coach. Yeah, but it, I mean, it was a clear change of swing and change of game plan yeah. for him. Mm-hmm. It, I don't. Maybe Jilly implemented that in the beginning, or maybe he made the decision in the off season with his hitting coach at home. I don't know, but it was. I mean, blatant. His yeah. shoulders were flying. His bat was dry. It was just a completely different swing. Mm-hmm. I didn't see him one time have those little creative, like, golf swings that yep. he had all the time. That, that's all I want from him. That's yeah, the only that's swing he should ever have. Yeah, we don't need, they're going to shift on you? Why was He should never hit into the shift ever in his life. Ever, ever. Ever. Never. 
Because yep. he's so good at push punts and flipping the there, ball. There, sh- there should be no shift. If anything, they should be shifting to like, the he, left he side. He might of the have field. the best eye that I've ever seen. Like, best hand eye coordination I've ever seen out of anybody I've ever played with or seen play ever. Really? Like, some of this, he used to, like, adjust mid pitch. Like, a guy throwing 96, 97, he would see the friggin' third baseman crash, come here and just push punt over, like, adjust mid pitch to, like, that and execute. Or he'd take little, like, sliding golf swings and, like, literally slice the ball down the third base line. Like, mm-hmm. stuff that, like, you do in slow pitch softball, he was doing as guys throwing 95, 96. So um, that, that's, that's what bothers me so much because right. I know it's in there. Yeah. So that that's all he needs to do, and he's an all-star every year. Like, And that's the thing, too, is if he was producing last year, we don't right. think he'll get by us. No. No reason to. Right. He, he listen, but, again, the way the game's going, people are paying home run hitters, which yep. is dumb. Absolutely. Because why wouldn't you pay a Tony Glenn? I, that's what, I'm not I, saying that Jeff's going to have Tony Gwynn's career, but, like, no, can he but, hit like that? Yeah. Absolutely. And if he – and that's the thing going into this year is, like, we're going off of what you did last year. And, right. what you're, and like, if, if that's the same guy we're going to get next year, I don't want you. I don't want that. But he has to change his approach. If he's batting 350 – so, where is he going to play? Do you, do, you, do you stick him in left field if he's batting 350? Do you stick him at third base if he's batting 350? Not if you have – um, if if, if we're, not, we're, like you're not going to go get Correa, if you have Correa, if if he hit 350 last year, it's a completely different conversation. On what's going on right now? Right. But he didn't. Yeah. And a lot of the times, it takes time to get back to where like you make a big swing. I think, he, it takes I think time next to get year back. he'll he'll get closer. He'll get. I hope he'll hit so. 280, I hope he makes the adjustment. I hope so. But is it going to be on the mat side? I'm not I hope, sure. I mean, listen again. I I love him. I hope he stays, but I hope he doesn't because like where again for his sake, I work. He doesn't want to sit on the bench. He doesn't deserve to. No. He deserves to play somewhere, but I just don't know if there's an opening for him if the Mets want to make a World Series run. And the biggest issue with all of this conversation is that there is no one at the controls right, right. now to make these moves. Yeah. Well, it, Bill, with his let's punt 2022, would have Jack McNeil playing. But if you yeah. want to win a World Series, I don't know if he fits into that. With the infield you want to bring in. Yeah. If you didn't have Lindor and Baez... Sure, put him at second base. He mm-hmm. could he could be a World Series winning second baseman and hit. Going into whatever. last year, he was a top three second baseman in the league. Yeah, but if you want the infield with all those studs, I just don't see it. I don't want him in the outfield. It, he's he hurts us out there still. Yep. He's still learning it. Yep. And you know this year a lot of balls dropped. I just I I think he should go play somewhere else and have success somewhere. He, he, once again, he can go play on a World Series team if they lose. Correa, he can go to the Astros and play. Yeah. His bat plays, and his glove will play what, there you, if they have an opening. Do you think uh, they lose Correa, they just move Bregman over to short? Probably. Is that a, I don't know what their their uh, system looks like. <laughs> they can get J.D. Davis back. True. <laughs> yeah. True. Yep. Yeah. Um, but, when, you know, you know J.D.'s going to go there and hit 50 home runs. And hit oh, absolutely. Oh, he's going to be peppering the yeah, – uh, just little, crushing the train yep. tracks. Um. Yeah, that's the problem with like a lot of these guys that I don't want to say leave because I, I know some of it's, you know, whatever. But to win a World Series, yeah, they got to – these guys got to go. They, mm-hmm. they can't keep doing the homegrown thing once the homegrown thing isn't working. Yep. And, again, bring these – bring Bill's uh, lover Bill's boys crew. here. Bill, Bill's crew up <laughs> in September and let them watch a real playoff yes, run. absolutely. And, and listen, let the, them sit there. Let them soak it in. Let them get some ABs late in games. If you have a lead, whatever, you're mm-hmm. down. Have a Khalil lead. Khalil Lee's fast. Vantos and yeah. Bandy have great bats. They can right. potentially you need a pinch be runner huge. late in a playoff run game, put Lee on second base and let him come in and score. Like, get him going. Like, yep. Get them used to that feeling and wanting that mm-hmm. always. If you bring them up and you punt the year, it, that's the problem with the Mets have had forever. They bring guys up in blah years and – do they know what winning's about? Do they want to really win? I'm sure they want to win, but they don't know what it's like to win. Right. So they don't know what it takes to get to that. Mm-hmm. You bring these young guys around a team that knows what it takes to get there, that's why you have success like the Rays have had and the Astros have had and everybody they bring up, but they're in a playoff race already. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm definitely curious to see how the, it all unfolds. And, it all, you know, listen, it might all not unfold at all, and we might have a, a lockout or whatever. The yeah. CBA yeah. might also be an issue. So. No idea. Did they cancel the winter meetings? I heard there were some, it's, I, I did read see that, that there's somewhere. talk of it, yeah. I'm I don't not, know if that was just a random Twitter account. No, I don't know. I, I know that there's uh, there's definitely a lot of conversations there. Yeah. Uh, or not there specifically just during that time frame. Um, yeah. John, I appreciate you coming on today. Thanks for having me. I, I think we're going to have to have you back probably pretty soon because we want to do an episode where we're kind of having this conversation of just GMing for teams. Yeah, um, let's and do I, it. 
because I think a lot of teams are on the cusp right now and kind of there's going to be a lot of free agency, a lot of moves to be made, especially with the Mets. Um, who knows? Maybe we'll have our episode. We'll put together the Mets' exact plan. We'll just send it over a nice little PDF to, to Uncle Steve, and then he'll it's not we'll going to be Bill's up. plan. No, for most not, likely not Bill's, Bill's plan. Out. I don't even want him there for that's terrible. <laughs> that's an awful plan. <laughs> I'm sure he'll uh, he'll have definitely something to say I can't say wait about for the that. text. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, it's going to be great. Well, I appreciate you coming on today. Guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks, John. Thanks for having me. Have a good one.